Next, we have the science segment. Barbara Brabitz is the host for the science segment. She'll be interviewing Fred Beglia. He's an arboretist, and he'll be explaining how global warming affects New York State forestry. So let's watch Barbara and her guest, Fred Beglia. guys. I want to welcome my next guest to Impact, where science does make an impact on us in the community, uh, and that's uh, Fred Breglia. He's the director of the Landis Arboretum in Esperance, New York. Fred, you're a ISA certified arborist, uh, and you're also a board member of the New York State Old Growth Forest Association. Is that, that correct? That's correct, Barbara. So what does that mean, Old Growth Forest Association? Why do we have an Old Growth Forest Association? Well, the Old Growth Forest Association was started because um, there's a need to protect and preserve the remaining stands of old growth forest um, in the world. And uh, my philosophy has always been sort of um, think globally but act locally. And uh, so we needed to do that in New York State. And uh, New York State um, is an important state, not that the other states aren't, but we have uh, a large percent, um, chunk of old growth in terms of states on the East Coast. Um, in fact, New York has the second uh, largest amount of old growth of any state, North Carolina being number one. That's interesting. So is it because we have reclaimed farmland that perhaps was cleared during the revolution and now it's growing back? Or is it that it was just never really uh, available for farming to begin with? I mean, I think of New York as a very old state. It, it well is. Populated. Uh, well populated. It's, the main reason is because of the Adirondack Park. Um, we have a large section of uncleared forests that are still protected in the Adirondacks. And um, the, the North Carolina has so much because of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Oh, wow, sure, yeah. So let's talk, again, think globally, act locally. Let's move our discussion on to global warming, global climate change, as it's more aptly called. Um, how should we really think of how global warming is affecting New York State, New York State forests, and even our own backyards? Well, you know, we've done a lot of studies with trees, and one of the things that we've done is we've taken lots of increment borings, which is basically just a, a small um, plug, if you want to think of it that way, out of a, out of a living tree. And uh, it doesn't really hurt the tree to mm. take this. It's, a, it's an injury, but, you know, again, we're... We're not really, it's nothing more than a branch being removed from nature. So it's a very minor, minor injury, minor wound. Take out the, the, literally the core sample and you can literally see all the rings. And each year, of course, um, being representative by a ring, you can really see how a tree grew. Oh, so you mean like when we went in the forest as kids and we counted the rings on a stump, there's more information than just how old that tree is? We can know more about it? Absolutely, and uh, one of the things that you can learn from looking at tree rings is you can look at the spacing of those tree rings, and that tells us how fast or slow a tree grew. So if there was a really dry period of time, you would see those um, drought sort of times literally located in those tree rings because the tree rings would be tighter together during a time when there wasn't as much water, and uh, therefore the trees would grow slower. So how, what does this tell us about global climate change? Well, at least in the Northeast, one of the things that we have seen um, is um, what we've come up with a uh, sort of a term for it has been old trees growing fast uh, phenomenon. Mm. And um, what that basically means is that, uh, and we're looking at indicator species when we are looking at this sort of old trees growing fast. So let me try to explain that a little bit more. Sure. Um, one of the things that we see, now I'm just going to use sweet, sweet gum, or I should say black gum, I'm sorry, black gum as an indicator species. Now. The reason why black gum is a great species to look at is because we're at the northern range of black gum. Mm. And uh, so you don't see black gum too much further north than here. And we did do a pretty extensive sampling of black gum in the Saratoga area. And in fact, some of the oldest black gum in New York State are located in Saratoga County. Okay. And uh, these trees are upwards of 600 years old. Wow. So that gives you a lot of recorded weather history. And uh, what we've seen here now, a tree like these old black gum are really at the, I would say, probably the, probably the last part of their lifespan. So you'll see these trees and they're really gnarly and they have broken crowns and very little leaves compared to what they used to have. And most of them have, you know, um, 
crooks or breaks and splintered out tops from all the years that they've been growing there. And typically, I always relate plants to people, but typically what you'll see, just like you would with a person, when you, let's just talk about people for a second, when you're upwards of 90 years old, 100 years old, you don't see a lot of growth occurring. But when you look at a young kid, of course, you see a lot of growth. Sure. Well, sure. trees are really no different than that um, because typically, unless something major changes uh, in terms of climate, those trees would typically slow down at that last part of their tree's life. So you'll see a real slowing, tightening of the rings in that last hundred years, per se. So well, what are we seeing in these trees as they get older that indicates global climate change? We're seeing an increase in growth in the last hundred years. Wow. And in particular, you look at the last 50 years and the last 30 years, and you're seeing more growth. So basically, do, and, and this is a great species to look at again because of the fact that we're at the northern range of black gum, um, typically those trees would, unless something favorably changes in their life to make them grow faster, they would be slowing right down. And one of the things that they would really look for in terms of a favorable condition would be a warming trend. Okay. Um, and increased levels of CO2 would certainly be uh, desirable by black, by black gum. They're sure. a southern species in, in particular. So Photosynthesis, carbon dioxide in, oxygen out. It's really kind of Twinkies for trees. It, it really is. And what we're seeing, like I said, is uh, these trees growing faster in the last 100 years than they did their, the entire 600 years. So the first 100 years was actually almost the same, if not slightly slower, than the last 100 years. And uh, that's a direct link to, to proving that you know, the, the Earth is warming up. I mean, we are seeing climate change. So now let's go from the science of it to really what that means about our backyards now, what it means to the viewer here in the capital region of New York. What do we expect to see with global climate change in our own backyard over, say, the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Yep. Well, I'm going to put it into a slightly larger scope, and we'll talk about the nation, and then we'll bring it back home again. Okay. And, um, just looking across the trends of the nation, now one of the big ones has been there's a lot of studies that have been done um, out in the western forests in particular because these forests are dating back a lot of them to several thousand years old. So we have some really old trees when we look at a lot of the western forests, in particular a lot of the conifers. And uh, what we're seeing with a lot of virgin forests, we're not talking about forests that are impacted by the pine beetles, which of course are, are, are a problem in itself. We're looking at virgin stands of timber in the mm -hmm. west mm -hmm. and into Canada, into British Columbia, and uh, all the way through the entire Pacific Northwest. And what we're seeing is a lot of old growth forests that are dying at alarming rates. And um, there's a, a number of major implications that, that occurs when you have that happen. Now, one of the main reasons for that mm -hmm. is actually climate change. And, and there's been a lot of studies to that. And the reason why the forests um, are actually declining is actually due to uh, snow melt. And with a slight increase in temperature, which is what we're seeing, especially mm -hmm. in the West, um, there's been a, a, a noticeable trend in rising temperatures. And we're not talking a huge trend in rising temperatures, but we're talking about a definite rising temperature trend, which unfortunately has a huge impact when we look at Western forests and forests across the world for that matter. But what we're seeing and, is- and, a, and us too, if the snowpack melts earlier, then that water's not available to us as humans to use for all our needs and wants. Exa that's exactly it. So, so that, can, that can be, it's a problem for all of us, not it's just It's a problem for all of us. A lot of that precipitation normally would fall as snow. It would be available, it would start to get warm. That snow would trickle out and feed those trees for a much longer period of time. And that would be, like you said, just for same for people, that, that water is available for a much longer period of time. Whereas if that precipitation falls as water and not snow, then the amount of snow melt and snow mass that you have is seriously diminished. And that means when summer temperatures begin to get really hot and there's not adequate water, there's no, no more snow, snow mass, there's no more snow melt. There's no more water to feed those trees. Those trees are dying of drought. Either flood or drought. I mean, you get the flood when the rain happens, yep. and then you get the drought after the flood is done. And we've seen that elsewhere in the world, too. That's right. Now, so let's talk about what's coming up at the Arboretum uh, here in Esperance, New York, not too far from Schenectady, Albany area. We have um, a, a full year calendar of events, which is available at www.landisarboretum.org. And uh, events for the family, events for adults. Um, 
We have a beekeeping class and we have star parties where the Albany astronomers can bring their telescopes and people can come out and look at the stars. So we are sort of a full spectrum uh, nature preserve. Everything from the stars to the trees to the bees. And they're all interrelated. So. Trees to the bees. I love it. Yeah, well, Fred Braglia, it's been a wonderful time having you here. Uh, as a fellow SUNY Cobble Skill alum, as you are, uh, I welcome you to Impact. And uh, thank you very much for coming in. It's my pleasure, Barbara. Good Thanks to, a lot. Good to be here.